Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So if you guys have been longtime viewers of this channel, you'll probably remember one of my earlier videos that I posted was a review on this gem, the Titan CS50, an extremely critical review that I have not gone back on since I originally posted it. I was very, very harsh on the Titan CS50. But there was a good point that I made in that video that I have never been able to correct. This trigger right here is a gray trigger. You know what that means? This blaster does not work. It is an Australian release, which means that the whole thing has been unironically nerfed to a point where it is basically unusable. No matter who you are or what you're doing, this blaster right here is completely unusable. There is nothing you can do about it. And there hasn't been anything that I've been able to do about it because the Titan CS50 is one of the rarest blasters ever made, especially by today's standards. After 2019, it was discontinued and it became extremely, extremely hard to get your hands on. So how on earth do I correct a review of a blaster that does not work? Simple. Buy another one. Yup. I'm still saying this is another Titan CS50, but this one has orange triggers and this blaster is completely stock. Brand new, fresh out of the box, never touched, sold to me by a friend with the 50 drum for $80. And yes, the 50 drum is new, which means not only are we getting a revised review on the blaster, we're getting a revised review on the most important peripheral it comes with. So with all that said, Let's give this giant w another try. I am heavy weapons guy. And this is my weapon. The Titan CS50 is a 2019 release in the N-Strike Elite series, marking it as the biggest and most expensive release in the entire series, tying it with the Rhino Fire at $100. But this one is substantially larger than the Rhino Fire. The Rhino Fire looks tiny next to this thing. This thing dwarfs every blaster in my whole collection besides the Gallarhorn. That's how big it is. It's seriously so big that it makes the Mega Mastodon which was the previous biggest blaster, looks small. Seriously, when they called this thing the Titan, they were not kidding. This blaster is gargantuan. But does its size have its cost in mind? Let's figure that out. This blaster's biggest peripheral is the 50 drum. So when I talk about design, the 50 drum goes. But with all that said, let's actually address the design of this blaster. Oh my gosh, it looks really good. I've always loved the way the Titan CS50 looks, and I will not change my mind here. This blaster looks super freaking good. Everything about it is cool looking. It looks like a minigun, but it looks like a laser cannon at the same time. I love how the barrel, while still spinning, is concealed within the shell. It gives it a much more cyberpunk futuristic vibe than something like a Zuru Ragefire, which is just full on minigun, no sort of like futuristic look to it at all. This thing balances the minigun aspect with the futuristic style that you would expect from a Nerf Elite blaster. It looks amazing. Every single detail makes sense. It's just all beautiful, intricate lines, lots of little intricate details. It's, it's detailed, but it's not super messy to look at. Like, it looks clean. It's a wonderful design. Both sides look good, even though there's no Nerf logo. But, I mean, the Nerf logo is a tiny, tiny little aspect on the whole blaster. All in all, this is one of my favorite Elite Blasters to look at. It always has been, it always will be. Gosh dang, the design, really good. What about the ergonomics? This blaster features a sling, which you probably should be using if you're ever using this blaster, because I mean, yeah. 
but it also features a foregrip and a main grip. No stock, no cheek rest or anything like that. This blaster is meant to be used from the hip. The foregrip seems like it would be small, but it's actually just the right size to for me to get all four of my fingers through. I feel like if your hands are bigger, you would have a lot more issues with the foregrip, but even then, I still think it's big enough for most people to get all four fingers through and for it to be comfortable. With all that said, it's very smooth. It's just a round thing for you to put your second hand on. As for the main grip, it was very worrying when I saw it. I thought that this was going to be super cramping for my three fingers, but it's actually not. It's actually plenty of space for my three fingers, and I could easily squeeze all four fingers in there before my hand comes in contact with the blue part of the shell. All in all, the main grip is extraordinarily comfortable. It is a very nice, big, comfortable, ergonomic, filleted main grip. And the ergonomic setup of this blaster is genuinely really, really nice. It's honestly my favorite ergonomic setup out of any of Nerf's heavy gunner blasters. No matter how much I use this thing, it never becomes uncomfortable. And that's a pretty big deal, because a lot of heavy gunner blasters become unbearable after a short period of time, which is why there aren't very many of them made. The best one runner-up was the Mastodon, and even then, this is way more comfortable than the Mastodon for me. So how does this blaster work? Well, this is the 50 drum. More on this in just a second. But this is a fully automatic magazine-fed flywheel blaster. So you take a magazine and you put it in the bottom like this until it clicks in. Then you rev the blaster. The rev trigger is right here where your index finger goes rather than being a middle finger power trigger. So you push the rev trigger with your index finger to rev the blaster, and then you push this trigger down with your thumb to fire the blaster full auto. And when you rev the blaster, this happens. Then to take the magazine out, you smack the blaster anywhere around this orange button. And it maximums. Now let's talk about the triggers and the smoothness of operation. This blaster features three triggers much like any other flywheel blaster. The rev trigger on this blaster is pretty cool. It's mounted from the top like right here, but it is a very nice press down when you push it in. The main trigger on the other hand is way more fiddly. It has this sort of trigger cover thing, which makes sense because you wouldn't want to put pressure on the main trigger at all times, especially because there's a very small lock preventing you from pushing it down, and it is very, very smushy and very fragile. It's a really sensitive fiddly main trigger. So the inclusion of this makes sense, but they did it in a really bad way. It's very, very floppy and it just doesn't feel that responsive whatsoever. It does work though and I plan on keeping this on just for convenience sake. So you leave it on, you pull the rev, you pull a rev trigger, and then the main trigger is really smushy. I think that it feels okay when you're using the blaster, but just in general, the main trigger is really, really smushy and I don't really know how to feel about it. As for the mag release, it seems like it doesn't make much sense, but it makes a lot more sense now that I've used it a lot, because it's a big button that sticks really far out, and when you push it in, it just mag drops. The mag well of this blaster is incredibly loose, so you don't really have to be precise with pushing the thing in and pulling the mag out. You can just smack it and the thing will mag drop. It mag drops with really small light magazines. Here's a basic 18 rounder, for example, to prove how easily it mag drops. You put it in, smack it, and it mag drops an 18 rounder. You'll probably be using 18 rounders or worker 22s with this. Every single mag that I tested above a 10 round magazine mag drops with absolutely no issues whatsoever. And really quickly on that note, putting the magazine in, is super smooth. It is a very nicely designed magwell. It is very, very slightly flared right along the edge. This little lip right here is flared. So it makes it very easy to put the magazine in, especially if you're using really big, stupid, ridiculous mags like the 50 drum that it is designed to be used for. It's very easy to hold the 50 drum and then just push it in and forget about it. It's just in and when you're ready to let go of it, you smack it, mag falls out. I wasn't even really precise and I still managed to mag drop the blaster. I'm emphasizing this so much because the biggest oversight that people look at is the mag release. People criticize this mag release a lot for being in a really weird spot, being far away from the mag well, but the intended use is the sloppy use. You punch it to drop the mag, which is a really heavy gunner thing to do. And I love using the mags with this blaster. It's 
fun. The emotional response of using the Titan CS50 is extraordinarily fun. Another thing that I want to mention is the rev up time and the rate of fire. It has about a two second rev up time, which is honestly pretty fast for a stock Nerf flywheeler of this size with this much stuff going on. Remember, this thing only uses 4D batteries. That is two less than the Mastodon, the Rhino Fire, the Vulcan, or even the Stampede. And this blaster revs up faster than all of those. Well, except the Mastodon. The Mastodon revs up almost instantly. In we go. So what mod potential does the Titan CS50 have? Well, a whole heck of a lot of mod potential. Most of this blaster is hollow. Everything behind this black piece of plastic is hollow. And most of the stuff in here is completely hollow. You have a singular conveyor belt style motor like what the Hyperfire and the Regulator have to advance the darts forwards. You've got two sets of flywheels here. And you have a big, stupid, ridiculous motor with a gear rack set up for the spinning barrel. All of those are just connected to a single board. So it isn't that hard to mod and there is a ton that you could do with the Titan CS50, especially because it's got a giant battery tray so you could put a LiPo in here with no problems whatsoever. There's a lot that you could do and probably you might want to do that because it is a magazine fed blaster rather than being a fiddly chain fed thing like the Zoo Rage Fire or the Dart Zone V-Twin. This blaster has the advantage of taking external box magazines right out of the box. And before I get to my opinion, I have to talk about the 50 drum. <sighs> I've always had a love-hate relationship with this magazine because it is a really, really beautiful idea and it was done very nicely. It's a good compact magazine considering it holds 50 rounds. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's absolutely massive. But considering the capacity this magazine is holding, it's not really any bigger than it needs to be. And the engineering that's gone behind the 50 drum is genius. It has this long follower that constantly updates as you progress the darts through the magazine. And once it gets to about here, it goes into this funnel thing here and just kind of bunches up behind this gear right here. It is a very ingenious design that makes perfect use of all the space that's going on in there. The problem is these are very unreliable. The biggest criticism people had with the 50 drum was how fiddly it was and how unreliable it was. Some of these 50 drums work perfectly, like the one that I'm holding right here, but a lot of them just don't, like the one that I got with my previous Titan CS50. So I have two 50 drums up to this point, they both look exactly the same, one of them works perfectly fine, the other one works tremendously awful, and I constantly confuse which one is which. I want to put a label on the bad one, just so I know not to use it and I know to use the good one. I know this is the good one, at least I think it is. I don't know, I might have to double check, but still. The unreliability of the 50 drum is why this blaster flopped so terribly. Because if you take a look at the blaster, like the rival Chaos, this is another expensive blaster that had an expensive proprietary magazine. The difference is that this magazine works every single time and there's never been any issues with the Chaos Mag. Yeah, there have been a couple lemons here and there once or twice, once upon a time, but for the most part, the Chaos Mag is consistent and reliable and it was worth investing in a bunch of these blasters to get a bunch of Chaos Mags, even though this magazine is really hard to deal with. 
The 50 drum was basically like Nerf lottery tickets. It was a hundred dollar blaster, a big blaster that you had to figure out where to put. And I mean, I have two of these. I don't know where to put the second one. I have the first one up on the wall. I don't know what to do with the second one until I end up integrating it. But for right now, these are expensive big blasters. They cost a hundred dollars a pop. And for you to not know if the 50 drum that you're gonna get is gonna work or not is a really, really painful risk to take and it absolutely sucks trying to mass 50 drums, especially nowadays. The Titan CS50 is really hard to get your hands on. A new one will run you back $500. But let's say you're like me. You get a good 50 drum, a good blaster, a good sling. What do I think of the Titan CS50? Well, I love this blaster. I love this thing a lot. Granted, I have always been one for the heavy gunner roll, just because, in my opinion, it's the most fun roll to have, running straight into the battlefield with a big, stupid, ridiculous blaster, not caring how many times you get shot, and just outputting as many darts all over the place as possible and having a good time, and this blaster is designed specifically for the roll. It only shoots a little bit faster than the rapid strike, but I'm gonna be honest, it feels like you're shooting a lot more darts per second when you're actually using this thing on the battlefield. It is fun. I used this thing at Hanu when we were doing an awfuls round, and I have never had more fun shooting nerf blasters in my life. It was everything I like about a heavy gunner blaster. It's actually practical as a heavy gunner blaster, which isn't something I can say about any other one other than the Prometheus. This blaster is genuinely underrated, and I think it rocks. I think if you find one of these blasters in the wild and they don't want too much for it, I mean like less than $100, this blaster is absolutely worth picking up, especially if it comes with a 50 drum. I mean, this blaster plus the 50 drum is a match made in heaven. It's comfortable, it's good looking, it's fun, it commits to the role, and even if you're a modder, there's a ton that you could do with this blaster integration-wise, just over overhauling it, even just making it run IMRs, you could probably do a lot with the Titan CS50. I love this blaster, and I give this thing the highest recommendation I can for a heavy gunner blaster. This one and the Prometheus are like the, the holy duet. It's like that one for rival rounds, this one for elite darts. Just go ham. I love this blaster. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.